Hello. Hello. Good morning, morning. and welcome, welcome to, to Shifa Power Women Summit. Uh, I would like to thank each of you for taking time out and being here today. Uh, coming to the program, Shifa Power Women Summit and Hackathon. The virtual summit is a three-day event that discusses the critical problem women face in the society. That includes cybersecurity, hygiene, and reskilling. 
On this first day of the summit, we are here to discuss cybersecurity and countering misinformation. Yes, the subject is very broad, but I believe that this is the right time to focus on this area. Advancement of technology and the wide use of digital media is making attackers smarter by the day. The risk and severity of cyber attacks have clearly grown over the past few years. Uh, every other day, we read news related to cybersecurity threats like ransomware, IoT-based attacks, cyberbullying, so and so. Today, we are here to discuss the cyber attack women face and the misinformation which is circulated through social media. I had a chance to attend a sober media summit organized by the US Department of State and World Learning at Almaty, Kazakhstan last year. The major discussion points were media literacy and misinformation. So this is a global challenge and how we can counter this. I express my gratitude to the American State Department, Alumni Ties, World Learning, IVLP, and US Consulate Chennai for giving me an opportunity to conduct this program, She Power. Today and the coming few days, we are here discussing the challenges of women face in the public and cyberspace. The uniqueness of this program is we are not only discussing the challenges, but also trying to find meaningful and cost-effective solutions to the topics I mentioned. For that, a hackathon is also being conducted on December 20th, that is this Sunday, with the support of Kerala Startup Mission. We already put forward problem statements and we have received a large number of solutions. And the final pitching for the hackathon will be on December 20th. On this occasion, I would like to thank Swart Foods, Startup Mission, Gender Park, Carp Startup Labs, Geeks Up, and Green Media for the excellent support in organizing this event. I welcome all of you gathered here virtually from across the world, from your residence and workspace. Yeah, in, on Zoom, we have a good number of participation. 77 participants are on Zoom, and we are live on FB and YouTube. Let's start today's session with the opening remarks by Judy Travin, Consul General, US Consulate Chennai. Welcome, Ms. Judy Travin, to She Power Summit. And before her speech, we'll watch a small audio video profile of Ms. Judy Travin. the U.S. Consul General Chennai on September 6, 2020. Before that, Raven worked as a public affairs counsellor at the U.S. Embassy in Lima, Peru and the International Relations Officer General at the Office of the Haiti Special Coordinator in Washington, D.C. She also worked in Islamabad, Santo Domingo, Khartoum, Yaoundé and Ciudad Juarez. As an editor, translator, and journalist in Asia, Africa, and Latin America. She has co authored Beyond Our Degrees of Separation, Washington Monsoons, and Islamabad Blues 2017, and authored Ballet in the Cane Fields Vignettes from a Dominican Wanderlog 2014. It is a pleasure for me to address the inaugural session of the She Power Hackathon and Summit. Although I'm unable to join you in person, I'm happy to convey my best wishes for this program. The United States has a long tradition of supporting women's empowerment through many programs and initiatives. Among several focus areas, we have prioritized the social and economic empowerment of women. According to a 1972 study by American Express, women-owned businesses at that time made up only 4.6% of the 19, the number of women-owned businesses skyrocketed to 42% of all US businesses, employing almost 10 million workers and generating almost $2 trillion in revenue. In comparison, India's women entrepreneurs make up 20% of all enterprises. Imagine the untapped potential women entrepreneurs have here in India. Last month, marking the annual Global Entrepreneurship Week, I spoke at a virtual panel discussion entitled Social Entrepreneurs Changing Lives, Changing Communities, organized by the US Consulate General in Chennai. Recently, I also had the honor of addressing nearly 40 women from throughout India 
who are enrolled in the 10,000 Women Ambassadors Program, hosted by Goldman Sachs and the Indian School of Business. ...stories of women who are facing head-on these challenging times and how their entrepreneurial activities are a welcome alternative to traditional business models disrupted by the pandemic. U.S. Consulate General Chennai maintains interest in supporting social entrepreneurs. This past November, I hosted a virtual panel with several social entrepreneurs in Kerala and Tamil Nadu who combine passion with profit. Further, in collaboration with the Amani Institute, the consulate is launching this month the Indian Women Social Entrepreneurs Network. The project includes capacity building workshops for Indian women social entrepreneurs. We have also invited several emerging entrepreneurs to visit the United States on short-term professional exchange programs. In the organizer of the She Power Summit is an alumna of the International Visitors Leadership Program, a prestigious U.S. Department of State exchange program. It is great to see how Nisha is applying what she learned in the United States and is sharing it with others. I understand that subsequent panel discussions as part of She Power will focus on cybersecurity and countering misinformation. From the campuses of Silicon Valley to the tech parks of Bengaluru, the United States and India have emerged as leaders in the field of IT development. Still, we must use these technological tools with care. Internet misconduct has resulted in billions of dollars of economic damage. Criminal networks misuse the internet to steal information and profit at the businesses and governments, underscoring the importance of cybersecurity and cybersecurity awareness. We must also be vigilant as we seek credible sources of information. These are only some of the emergent challenges of the 21st century. And I am pleased that She Power Summit is considering these important issues. In conclusion, I would like to reaffirm the US government commitment to promoting and supporting outstanding and impactful achievements of women in India and around the world. I'm confident the She Power Summit will ignite and inspire women entrepreneurs who seek solutions to challenges on women's health, cybersecurity, upskilling, and other areas. I wish the She Power the best of success for all participants, all participants of She Power. Thank you. That's a wonderful start. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Judith Ravin, for your wishes and encouragement. So let's move on to the next session. Joining with us, ADGP Manoj Abraham, IPS from Kerala Police. He's a right person to give the inaugural speech on cybersecurity the Nodal Officer of CyberDome, which is a PPP initiative in Kerala to counter the challenges of cybersecurity. Let's watch his profile and welcome him for the inaugural speech. Currently, the additional Director General of Police, Headquarters and Nodal Officer CyberDome, Manoj Abraham IPS, began his journey at the force in 1994. Master in Police Management and Economics, he has served as Additional Director General of Police, South Zone. Additional Director General of Police, Armed Police BN, with full additional charge of Tiruvananthapuram Range and Traffic and RSM, IGP Traffic and Road Safety Management. Headquarters, CP of Tiruvananthapuram City and Kochi City, SP Crimes, SP of Kannur, Kollam, Patanamthitta and Commandant KAP3. Welcome, sir, for the inaugural speech. Very good morning. Uh, it's uh, uh, 
Ms. Judith Raven, Honorable Consul General, U.S. Consulate Chennai, and all my dear delegates of this uh, SHIPA Summit. It's indeed a matter of great pleasure and honor to be a speaker at this uh, important summit, the exclusive virtual summit for women organized by Chan Liam and uh, in association with the American State Department. And that too on a very relevant topic of today, that is uh, cyber security and uh, countering misinformation. That uh, we are presently in the post pandemic situation, we are uh, in, a, in a digital world which has really gone more digital, uh, which has accelerated the, uh, the digital aggregation that we have in the present times. And though the talk is of uh, COVID hygiene and uh, washing your hands, etc., equally important is the cyber hygiene, which we really concentrate on, because the cyber world has become a part of our life. The virtual reality is really a reality now for the human beings as such. And if you look at the present times in the, in the newspapers itself, in the last uh, few days, few weeks itself, you will find a lot of information, a lot of attacks on, on great entities. Uh, we had an outage on Google and Gmail and uh, YouTube just a couple of days back where uh, it had to go out for uh, 50 to 60 minutes. We had uh, entities like the U.S. State Treasury being hacked, uh, uh, the departments being hacked, the important uh, company like the FireEye, which actually looks at cyber security being hacked by hackers from, from various uh, states. We have a lot of uh, ransomware attacks in recent times. In the COVID times, we have seen crimes against uh, women, children going up almost 300% if you look at the figures of the law enforcement. And uh, the situation is really, really very bad. And COVID, uh, the post-pandemic uh, situation where we have come with a lot of online features, a lot of online classes, uh, work at home, and all kinds of features, it has really accentuated this problem. The similar problem is with the information also. And uh, very aptly, this conference is discussing misinformation, particularly on the net. We have a lot of uh, wrong information being floated on the vaccine, a lot of information being floated on the disease itself. And now it is not only data theft, which was one of the major crimes earlier, now it's data manipulation of the people tend to manipulate the information so that the reputation of that particular person or the company or the government really suffers in the eyes of the public. So these are some of the major problems that has come up. So what it emphasizes is basically cyber security is now one of the key major issues that we need to really look at. And if humanity has to really go forward, we really need to look at cyber security because that is so very crucial now in the present times. And uh, uh, the problem with cyber security, when you, when you talk of uh, cyber security or securing our digital space, from the law enforcement point of view, with the crimes increasing like this, with the complexity of crime changing uh, every now and then, the cyber criminal, the, the, the cyber criminal turning from a, a rookie to basically a very sophisticated criminals and even state players actually being involved in cyber crime. And the complexity and the variety of cyber crimes have increased so much that it's very, uh, very difficult for a law enforcement agency or for a company or for any woman or children who are using the net to actually, actually be safe in this world. So we really need to look at this problem. We need to really discuss this problem and to bring out solutions that can really make us secure. Now, Kerala police has been working on this field uh, from a uh, from, uh, few years now, because we understood this problem that this cyber arena is going to be a problem in the future and it has come to really far. So we started a initiative called Cyber Dome, which is actually uh, a public-private partnership initiative to prevent cyber crimes. Now, this is very different from the other initiatives in the sense that police generally, as we traditionally know, we are generally an organization which comes into the picture after the crime happens. If you see in the films also, you, the crime happens and then the police jeep comes. So basically, it's uh, when the crime is reported to us, we come into action. But what we did in the cyber world, we understood that you cannot actually detect cyber crimes because uh, it can be done by anybody sitting anywhere in the world. 
So it's very important to prevent cyber crimes. So that is where we came in with the cyber dome concept, where we actually try to prevent crimes. And most of the crimes are basically, one of the major crimes are against women and children on the net. And that's one of the ma major focus areas. Now the second great difference uh, in this initiative is basically it's a public private partnership initiative. Generally all the police initiatives are generally within the department where the police officers only are involved. But we understood that in the cyber realm, it is not only the police that can play the role. It's very important that we actually tie up with the experts, the ethical hackers, the stakeholders, the banks, everybody should come together to actually fight this menace and ensure that the cyber security in various areas are maintained to that extent. That's why this initiative has come up. We have been very successful over the past four to five years in controlling all kinds of crime. And we have specialized agencies, uh, specialized wings looking at crimes against children, crimes against women, crimes against uh, banks, all kinds of things. And uh, our, basically our crimes against children and women has been one of the most successful entities where we have actually detected scores of cases in the past, uh, past few years, which has gained international recognition also. So basically, uh, this initiative needs to be taken ahead. And uh, we need to really gear ourselves to the new challenges that are coming up because the nature of crime is changing very rapidly. New crimes are coming up, the complexity is coming up. So we need to really, it's a cat and mouse game. And we really need to build ourselves, make ourselves more resilient and go ahead. So what is the message from the law enforcement perspective? We always understand that cyber crime is a very difficult crime to detect. Because as I mentioned earlier, it is basically a crime without borders. So somebody sitting somewhere in any part of the globe can actually do something or harass a person uh, in Kerala. And it's very difficult for a law enforcement agency to catch that criminal sitting somewhere else. So it is basically uh, protecting ourselves at the victim level or at the user level that's so very important. So the main message that we need to pass on to everybody and particularly to this conference and to all those attend attending this conference, we need to secure ourselves. That is the message that we keep on giving to every individual. Every individual, every company, every organization, every government, we need to secure ourselves because that is the only thing we can do. We talk of uh, cyber hygiene and uh, COVID hygiene in times of uh, things saying that we should wash our hands, we should maintain our social distancing, etc. So I always keep on saying that we should watch, uh, we should wash our cyber hands also. We should uh, keep a, a cyber distance between things that we should uh, download or things we should not download. So all those uh, do's and don'ts of cyber security, every individual needs to follow. Only then we can keep ourselves safe in the cyber world. So my message is, uh, we need to follow all those protocols of cyber security. Then only we can protect ourselves and this nation from this, from this world which has come to stay. And in the online world, we need to secure ourselves because the future is there. So thank you very much for this opportunity. And I want to thank once again the uh, organizers of this very relevant summit and the hackathon because uh, it's a very relevant thing in the present times as I mentioned earlier and I'm sure that this conference is going to be very successful and uh, many more projects, many more solutions, many more concrete ideas are going to be generated from this conference and it's going to be useful not only to, to all of us to ensure that our cyber space remains safe. So thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you so much, sir. Let's follow that protocol. Thank you so much, Manu Jabraham, IPS, ADGP Kerala, and wish you all the success for the cyber dorm. And we expect more initiatives uh, from Kerala government and police department. Thank you so much for your time. So now we are moving to the panel discussion led by eminent personalities and subject experts. Uh, welcome, Advocate Napanai, Sadish Ashwin, Manjalada Kalanithi, and Amidab Kumar to the session. We'll have a quick look at their audio video profiles and come back to this session. Supreme Court Senior Advocate and Founder of Cyber Sati, NS Napinai, specializes in constitutional, criminal, IPR and cyber laws. She is amicus curiae before the Supreme Court in Prajwala vs Union of India to formulate methodologies to remove child sexual abuse material and offensive videos against women from online platforms. 
A TEDx speaker and prolific writer, she has authored the book Technology Laws Decoded. She was part of government committees dealing with policy issues on cyber laws, expert member of Tamil Nadu State Child Policy Committee, and advisor to Tamil Nadu e-governance agency and Maharashtra Cyber Police. Cyber security expert and international author Satish Ashwin is the head of research and operations at National Cyber Defense Research Center, India, which focuses on advanced technology threat intelligence, investigation of advanced cyber attacks, research on cyber espionage and APT attacks. The founder of the Cyber School, an initiative by World Cyber Health Organization, director of Cyber Awareness Program for Women and Children, regional head of Entrepreneurs Council of India and core member of Recruitment Analysis Council, he researches in application security, Internet of Things, IoT, Internet of Brains, IOB, malware analysis and threat intelligence. A senior journalist, TEDx speaker and a beacon of change, Hyderabad-based Manjulata Kalanidhi has highlighted burning societal issues during her 18 plus years in journalism. She, who admires digital media, has written on a variety of subjects such as gender issues and citizen activism. She is the recipient of the UN I Congo Karam Veer Chakra Award, JFW Women Achiever Award 2014, IVLP Fellow, Points of Light Award from Queen Elizabeth and nominee of L'Oreal Social Influencer 2015. Amitabh Kumar, the founder of Social Media Matters, is a cyber feminist and online safety and gender rights activist. Although he studied microsystem techniques at Freiburg, Germany, his core inclination remained gender rights and online safety activism. Creator of Social Surfing and Twee Surfing, he has extensively worked to resolve online safety issues with platforms like Facebook and Twitter. He is also their advisor for the online safety of the users. More than 500 workshops on online safety held under his leadership across India were successful. Wow, what a diversified panel from different parts of India. Great connecting to you all virtually. We'll start with Advocate Napanai, Senior Educate, Supreme Court and Founder Cyber Sati. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning and thank you for having me here. <laughs> okay, so it's our pleasure. So we are in a digital world. Yes, we interact here virtually, which is part of again a digitalization. Uh, when we discuss the topic digitalization, without adequate security support, there is a heightened risk in that. Uh, what ADGP pointed out the same point. First, let's start with the concerns and challenges. How this subject is relevant today, cyber threat and misinformation. Um, thank you, Nidhi. Uh, uh, thank you, Nisha. Sorry. Uh, see, it is not like this is a subject which is relevant only today. It has been relevant all through. You know, it's just that the uh, relevance is more heightened, more so with the lockdown and our reliance on digital medium during this uh, COVID phase. I'm actually quite glad for this phase, for this purpose only, you know, for the limited purpose that what we've been trying to, uh, the messages that we've been trying to share, the uh, safety and security messages that we have been uh, emphasizing have become a lot more uh, uh, relevant. And more importantly, it is now heard when we say it, you know, and that is thanks to the kind of awareness that this digital uh, reliance has brought in. So when we talk about threats and vulnerabilities, we usually segregate it in the same way as we do with general crime also, which is national threats, economic threats, and individual threats. So when we speak about uh, she power and threats and vulnerabilities online, so naturally the third aspect, which is the individual threat, comes to the fore which is absolutely relevant and important that each one of us faces a lot of uh, risks and vulnerabilities, least of all being uh, misinformation, defamation, right? And, I'm, and that these are very serious offenses when it is applied to women and children. But I'm still saying that as the least of all.
and the uh, intensity of crime and the risks and threats keeps growing from there to personal harm, what we colloquially call as revenge porn, but which ideally just ought to be called cyber extortion or sextortion and a lot more threats. But primarily, the one aspect I wanted to highlight as an opening statement is when offenses occur online, when statements are made online, people assume that there is no offense committed, right? Because everything is just virtual. It's not like a physical attack where you hit somebody or you say certain words where it, you can actually see the reaction of the person. So in my book, in fact, I've called, equated it to Lady Macbeth's uh, soliloquy, where she never committed the crime, but she instigated a murder. And later on, when she's dreaming about it, she actually sees blood on her hand. And I have said virtual crimes are like that. You may not see the blood on your hands, but if you're doing something which makes somebody lose their life, then you are committing a murder. You are probably instigating suicide. So you are committing that crime. That blood of that person is indeed in your hands. So the first message I would want to share is, do not assume that a virtual crime is victimless. The victims suffer a lot more. The impact of it is much longer and deeper. So we need to be really careful and not do that which we would not do in person. So whilst I'm totally with Mr. Manoj Abraham and what he said about the importance of creating awareness amongst users, I have been doing this for a long, long time now, apart from the, my practice in this field and specialization, etc. But there is another aspect which I believe is very important, which is that we also have to educate public that a, what is a crime so that they, if they commit the crime, they have to fear the consequences. They have to understand that every action does have a consequence. They can be caught, they can be penalized and therefore this aspect of deterrence, which is otherwise missing when you do not know that something is a crime, when you are not aware that you can be caught, you know, that aspect needs to also be equally emphasized, again, as a preventive measure. We are not just talking about, uh, uh, you know, punishment later, but even this awareness about what you can face as a criminal is very important. And I feel that this is the narrative that is missing, unfortunately, in today's discussions. So I would love to emphasize that. And the final point in my opening statement is, people have to understand that online crimes has a financial impact. We are not only talking about the economic impact to companies or large corporations here. Even individuals have a financial impact. So if, you, if a woman faces cyberbullying and she is then be, being told to stay away from social media or stay away from the harm, do not feed the troll, etc., what we all forget is being online may be part of her work uh, requirement. Being online itself may be her work. You know, so to tell somebody keep away from your workplace because then you can keep safer is not an option. So we have to understand that when we speak about even individual crimes, the impact is physical, psychological and financial. So we have to treat these issues a lot more seriously and not assume that it is only virtual. Fair points, ma'am. Coming to Sadish Ashwin, uh, you are working with uh, legal and law enforcement and even with the private sector for ensuring security in the cyberspace. Uh, while planning and implementing the security measures in electronic infrastructure, what are the challenges you find mainly women face in this digital space? Question to Satish. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, you're audible, please. Okay. So, uh, first of all, I want to, you know, thank, uh, thank you for having me here, and uh, you know, to 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 give an uh, overview of what exactly uh, the current situation and the issue 
issues that people face and the uh, you know organizations, the individual space across the uh, country. Uh, you know, uh, people should first uh, realize that we we moved on uh, and we are we are uh, you know in the next uh, generation where uh, we are into digital. In fact, we actually crossed the digital uh, generation. Now we are moving into the uh, 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 virtual uh, generation. But however, uh, uh, we are still uh, you know not able to understand what uh, really digital is all about, right? So we have the uh, physical world, we have the digital world, and we have the virtual world, right? So where you know in physical world everything is limit. You have a limit. You cannot drive your car more than you uh, know speed. Similarly, you cannot have more than one bike, right? <laughs> that is again an issue. But when you come to digital, uh, everything is limitless. You can do whatever you want. People, uh, you know, people can uh, be married in the uh, real world and they can still be unmarried in the uh, digital <laughs> world. That is very much uh, possible. So the problem here is people, uh, everybody should understand and, and uh, you know, this is time uh, for each and everyone to understand and, and uh, you know, realize how we are consuming the digital world, right? And when you're having a mobile phone or when you're, when you're having a laptop, when, when you're going to work for an IT uh, sector or anything that is connected to the internet, uh, right, you need to understand the uh, limitations of that particular device that you're handling. Because every device that is connected to internet is a is a is a weapon. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a digital weapon, right? Your mobile phone is a weapon. Your laptop is a. You can actually do a lot of things with your mobile phone. In fact, you can uh, uh, even uh, kill uh, someone uh, using your mobile phone, right? So it has, it, it is a such a powerful uh, weapon. So uh, people should realize what they are having in their hand because whenever there's a there's a crime that happened or any incident that occurred. Right. People uh, uh, come to us, and, and uh, you know the first uh, answer that uh, they say is, you know, we were not aware of this. You know, we were not aware that something like this could happen to them. The problem here is, uh, they have the smart mobiles, they have the smart laptops, they have everything smart devices, but they don't know what it can do. There are people who don't change their default password. Many of the houses they have CCTV cameras, but nobody has changed their default password till then. Wi-Fi router. These are the basic things that people should understand. If they have something that is connected to the internet in their control, they should make sure what to do, what not to do. They should clearly understand what is the rules and don't. Because uh, uh, in today's world, crime against women are increasing very very rapidly, and the problem here is. They, they they are not even uh, uh, you know comfortable to come up and and uh, you know report the crime i've seen many people uh, who do not raise a complaint at all they they, they say they are because they're concerned uh, within their family they they say no we don't want to let our family down so we don't want to take this as a big issue we don't want to file a complaint because it is going to affect their life because once there is a uh, uh, case file right they'll have to know uh, go to court for multiple times so they want to avoid all those situations right so they're, they're not even ready to come up uh, and and admit uh, that something has happened something is affecting them so a lot of women they, they put everything inside themselves because these are digital crimes and they cannot explain it to someone they cannot tell if it is physical definitely they would have shared uh, with somebody uh, somebody might help them, but in digital world, nobody knows what is happening within you because everything happens within your mobile and you. So, uh, uh, if anybody uh, uh, has someone's personal picture and starts blackmailing them, then uh, uh, you know the, the targeted person is not at all ready to come out and and tell them, uh, uh, you know, raise a complaint in police or, or the cyber crime department saying that they're personal pictures are being, uh, you know, hacked and uh, they have started blackmailing them, right? Because uh, it involves their personal life. Uh, it involves their emotion. Uh, when when someone is affected, as uh, you know, Madam said, right? It is not, uh, they, are, they are physically hurt, they are mentally, psychologically hurt very much and, and uh, financially they are very much hurt. So, you know, uh, uh, in digital, it is very easy to target someone. Uh, it is very easy to, you know, uh, uh, seduce someone, but uh, the impact is very, very huge. So uh, people should be very careful uh, in what they are saying. Everything in digital life is just an illusion, right? So it's 
not actually uh, uh, through whatever you see in the digital media, uh, uh, whatever you see in the digital life is just an illusion because uh, uh, physical is what uh, you see real. You may be talking to someone, but uh, the end person may be someone else. Right? So that's, that is the point that I wanted to post. Uh, you know, uh, you should be very careful in digital because uh, and the next generation is going to be the virtual generation which we will not have control at all. The crime will increase like anything. So, so we should come up uh, uh, with a solution to get this uh, addressed. You put forward that in very simple words. In the physical world, you can have only wife, uh, one wife, but in the digital world, yes, two or three wives. That's the scenario in the digital space. So, senior journalist from Hyderabad, uh, you were there at Almaty, Kazakhstan for discussing the subject of misinformation. Manju, uh, the globally, the spread of fake news or misinformation has taken very seriously. It's a, pres a pressing issue for the government, not only government, individuals, companies, women, and society. So how this misinformation spreads on social media and what to do about it? Manju. All right. Uh, thank you, Nisha. I hope I'm audible. Yeah, you are. Okay. Uh, so first, uh, three cheers to uh, She Power, Channel IM, and Nisha Krishnan, who I met at Kazakhstan uh, you know, event, Alumni Ties event. I'm happy she's organizing it. And thank you for having me. So, um, you know, have you ever in your wildest dreams imagined that sharing a WhatsApp post uh, can actually kill people. I'm sure not many of us have ever given a thought to this. We are often told online, share, like, comment, uh, you know, this post. But according to a, a survey by BBC, at least 31 people have been killed and dozens more injured in India between February 2014 to July 2018 as a result of fake news, as a result of rumors online, rumors that have been passed on as news. So do not consider fake news as, as just something very virtual. It can actually affect your real life, the peace, the law and order situation. Recently, uh, so my, my, my battle with fake news is at two levels. One, as a media person, uh, it's, it's, uh, I'm not only, you know, I, previously we used to be scared of just our boss, uh, you know, our, our colleagues who might point out errors, maybe, uh, you know, a grammatical error that might creep into your newspaper. But today, the battle is bigger. Today, I'm also scared of, this, of a fake news that could undo all the research that I have done, which is why the pressure to be there with the correct authenticated news as media persons has increased. I'll give you an example. Uh, about uh, three months ago, uh, during the uh, COVID-19, uh, you know, when, when of, of COVID-19 has been uh, for since March 2020, so I think around the month of August, there was one particular WhatsApp uh, post. It was also there on Facebook and Instagram. Everybody started sharing a post which talked about uh, 25 numbers you could, uh, you could call if you want, uh, you know, uh, uh, plasma, uh, you know, uh, the, the plasma uh, blood for uh, COVID-19 uh, treatment. Uh, so uh, this post went, got so viral, uh, Nisha. Uh, everywhere you went, you would find this particular post. Uh, and uh, when I actually, one day I thought this is amazing, 25 numbers in one go, how useful is it? I actually, like uh, the journalist in me, woke up. Although I did not need blood at that point of time, or I did not know anybody who needed a, a plasma, uh, you know, uh, you know, a, an injection of plasma uh, for uh, treating COVID-19, I called up, I started calling up the numbers. And you won't believe that of all the 25 numbers, almost 22 could not even be reached. I tried calling up the number. It would be a dead number. It would say this number does not exist. Or, you know, I would just get caught, not get connected. The couple of numbers that I got connected were all wrong numbers. So this is the state of affairs. Imagine somebody actually got hold of this list of numbers. They have an emergency of, uh, you know, a loved one. So this is the kind of things to do not believe things just because somebody has shared. So how do you deal with this? How do you deal with fake news? So as a journalist, I took the trouble to write a story saying that this particular viral thing, and it went as a Bombay list. 
people in hyderabad started sharing it people in kochi in tamil nadu every single place i wrote the story primarily to say that stop sharing this particular post because it's false do not create trauma for people who are in need of plasma blend at that point of time so that is something that i did from my end but typically how do people know what is fake news because until and unless you know fake news you are probably not going to stop sharing it you know these days it's so very very easy to be able to uh, share uh, fake news so these are some five very very simple things uh, that i can tell you on how to identify fake news okay uh, so I, yeah please please continue manju yeah yeah so how much how much time do i have nisha i just have five points uh, yeah, to make very just, i mean can just continue i mean yeah okay so there are very simple five uh, things that you can all follow first is don't just read the headline and share it you know we have this habit we say we find something interesting with smartphones now everybody wants to be a breaking news journalist you want to be you want to make your uh, your post very very interesting you want to make your feed uh, full of spice as somebody who always is in tune with the latest news so a lot of times this happens especially in twitter because twitter is so easy to to share and also in facebook unlike maybe in instagram it's a little more tough you need to like share it as a story and things like that uh, so whenever you are sharing something first don't just read the headline please read a little below understand what it is and only then share it uh, recently twitter introduced a new feature in which before you share uh, before you hit the retweet button or share button it gives you a small nudge saying that why don't you read the story here is the link i thought that's a, like a brilliant game changer in in counter fake news and trust me there are times where i read the piece and then i'm like oh no this is not what i want to share that is one thing so when you read ahead when you read something please take 2 seconds more to read what it is and once you are convinced only then you should share it number 2 who author who, who wrote for his or her own bias created this news their own propaganda what is the source of this is it by a professional journalist from a professional media house who probably takes the effort to make sure authentic news is out there so make sure you read the author number 2 the date of the article the date is very very important so every time a flood occurs uh, in your in your and this is extremely rampant in india we are very very uh you know very very happy giving people uh, latest news about floods and cyclones so recently when hyderabad had floods uh, in month of uh, september we had so many uh, so many uh, uh, you know videos from the chennai floods from dehradun floods even from jammu floods so this kind of news sharing these kind of news which have happened previously actually creates fear psychosis among people and imagine what happens when you are already in a safe place but you you just see a, a a video or a picture that shows that you know there is an impending danger for you so uh, so please uh, do please do check the authenticity of that a very simple way is put uh, the video i think uh, or a picture that you have got and say search google for this image you just have to suppose you found an image of you know some some kind of a, be, a lake be, uh, getting breached just right click on that picture and see search google for this image if there are hundreds of pictures and you know it goes back to a previous date you know it is fact, uh, fake news which is misinformation and you should neither be reading it nor should you be writing it nor should you be sharing it fourth so internet is full of satire sarcasm funs and memes so when you read something please see if it has if it has uh, you know originated from a uh, fake news page uh, from a meme page so what happens memes and fake news pages thrive in uh, putting out this kind of funny news so be careful it has it has it started from that kind of a news go back to the source and then only you share it number 3 biases when you are sharing something understand do i have a regional language communal bias what happens when i am sharing it do i need to share will it lead to a healthy debate or is it going to create a law and order you know each of us are adding the spark to this fire of communal violence so before you discuss do not treat uh, face, face you know social media as just my my feed my my feed uh, and i will discuss whatever i want it's my freedom of speech yes but your freedom of speech 
should not cost lives the fifth and the last point is ask the experts if you have read something very sensational about a politician i suggest you probably get in touch with a friend uh, who's who's a who's an expert in pol hey you know what i read this news in this random website what is it about so most of the times they clear you they clear so as as consumers of news i want you to check these five things headline author date joke bias and experts and i can tell you that you can weed out 80% of misinformation right there please remember that every whatsapp post every insta story tweet fleet whatever it is can lead to even loss of lives so be careful think before you share thank you so much very relevant points manju and uh, coming to amitabh kumar you can definitely correlate the live incidents because you work with organization social matters and please uh, tell us more about that amitabh Amitabh. Ah, good, great. So, um, thank you, uh, thank you for having me on this panel, and uh, uh, I just want to echo what the speakers have said. And uh, uh, Advocate uh, Napinai is uh, inspiration for us all, uh, ma'am. You're fighting a great battle, and uh, we hope something extremely positive comes out of it. And uh, things what uh, uh, Mr. Ashwin and uh, ma'am Kalinidhi said is it's totally true, and. uh you know uh, something which uh, mr ashwin said just uh, really made me wonder you can kill somebody with your mobile phone but uh, you don't even need a license or any sort of an age to own it let's just think about this go back in reverse in india as a country where you need a license for everything to ride a scooty to um, uh, drink alcohol you have to be 25 but uh, one of the most powerful devices in the world we hand it to two year old and most of the parents are very proud that my child can skip ads on youtube so that's the space we are coming from uh, something uh, that miss uh, talnidhi said i totally agree with it uh, only issue on the ground is where we work is that there is only news and most of the people in india don't even know that there's a concept of fake news so we don't even know that this major uh, epidemic of information exists that's part one part two cyber security i mean uh, 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 working together with these large tech companies we handle cases on a daily basis and uh, just like it was said earlier uh, there might not be a major financial loss that we can calculate but there is a major major human loss there is a major emotional loss a small case of cyber bullying of a child in class 2 might lead them to commit suicide at the age of 18 one picture of yours and this is not even a naked picture a picture of yours with a cigarette in your hand or a beer bottle in your hand might lead to you never getting a job or never getting married these are realities of our country only issue is who takes the responsibility there are major laws protecting most of the powerful companies there are uh, major laws protecting most of the internet service providers similarly with the people who create the hardware so currently india finds itself uh in a space where the, the the citizen the consumer has very few practical protection yes you can go to the court and there will be an extensive uh, case but uh, tell that to a 13 year old from a small town uh and uh, it is not a, a reality they want to face but creating a social media account or creating an email takes only 3 clicks but removing your private picture from that same place will require a court order and you would need an advocate and you would need a fir to get it done we need to start looking at who is internet serving is it 11 white men in america or is it the large population across the globe what about parents who are completely lost about online education you know the dream of digital india is beautiful but it's actually a nightmare for parents they do not even understand what the children are doing on the phone till march this year we were telling children to stay away from the phone stay away from the laptop stay away from the tab but now because of their education they are on the phone on the tab on the laptop for 10 hours 8 hours at a stretch so situation on the ground and i take a good example from one of my experiences in germany 
uh, I was uh, a part of this committee which was deciding on data speed and prices. And of course, being an Indian, I pushed them to have high data speed and low prices. All the Germans told me in one sentence, you cannot give technology to everybody without awareness. That is why we'll keep the data slow, we'll keep the prices high, and we'll give people time to adopt. Giving every farmer an online account does not make their life simpler. It makes them vulnerable to cyber attacks because they do not understand passwords and OTP. Similarly, in a situation like India, just like ma'am was saying, women are told to stay away from the internet. Um, growing up under uh, some, some great feminists, we were told the same story 25 years ago where women were told, don't go out on the streets. <laughs> Before that, it was don't go out of your home. So we need to make sure who is the technology serving. And that is the only question every stakeholder needs to add. Because no matter what the large tech companies tell you, and I work with them and I have a lot of respect for their creativity, but they are businesses. And businesses are run for one motive, which is profit. And that is where all of us come in, the stakeholders like advocates, lawyers, cybersecurity experts, journalists, who need to serve the people. So a uh, lot of lot of power to she power and uh, a lot of uh, respect for you to bring together this amazing panel and uh, the focus uh, what we need to bring is on awareness, on capacity building, and ensuring that our courts, our technology, and our police is only serving the citizens of this country. And that has to be the priority, which I think sometimes gets lost in the, in the glitz and glamour of the high-tech world. It is attractive for information. It is extremely entertaining. But like Satish said, the threats of the cyber world are real. The human trafficking, the drug trafficking, uh, the murders, the rapes, the um, unsolicited private images and videos which are going around. This is serious crime and we need to do a lot about it. That's great, Ashwin. And Adukit Napana, we have all, all, almost discussed the challenges and problems. Uh, but uh, when we come to the how to control, that's the next question. So we live in a democratic country. Uh, we talk more on liberty and freedom of expression. So when we try to control certain things, uh, specifically affecting a mass uh, community or society, uh, there is a big question over there. What is the real definition of you know, freedom, liberty, or how to control a social media? Uh, can you unmute, ma'am? Yeah, I could not unmute myself earlier. So thank you for that. This is such an important question, Nisha. In fact, uh, you mentioned about the case I'm appearing as a micazin in uh, Prajwala versus Union of India. And this was primarily one of the issues we had to discuss extensively. See, I've been a libertarian myself too. So when I'm talking about use of artificial intelligence tools, to be able to filter out certain kinds of content at a pre as a preemptive measure or at a preemptive stage before it is uploaded or disseminated to public. The first issue that I myself had to come to terms with is, will it amount to a restriction or restraint on liberties or freedom of speech? So therefore, if you take the suggestion that I put before the court, even in Prajwala, there was a balance that was struck to say that why can't we use similar tools as that are being used for protecting copyright content to prevent crime, where you segregate content which is identified as possibly, uh, uh, you know, rape or gang rape videos of women or child sexual abuse content. And then it is only quarantined. In today's post-COVID world, we understand quarantine very easily, right? But this, I'm talking about something that happened in 2017. So I, I suggested a quarantine phase where social media platforms can take their time to review, evaluate, and then decide whether this is innocuous content or news which can be uploaded online. So the whole construct was that if it is very um, harmful content, once it's uploaded and the law says that when a government notice or a court order is issued, the platform has to take it down within 36 hours. 
36 hours can be a very long time in the lifetime of a digital uh, content, right? So you, there is so much harm that can be caused. Whereas if you take 36 hours or even 36 days to review through human intervention and then upload, no harm will be caused. And I'm just mentioning this in response to your question with respect to how do you balance liberties, free speech with protection, right? So this is where the line, the fine line is drawn. We have this funny saying that you can extend your hand, but you can only extend it up to the next person's nose. It cannot travel beyond <laughs> that because if you hit the nose, then you have violated some other person's rights. So we also cannot exercise our rights where it impacts somebody else. So that was a wonderful uh, uh, explanation that Manju gave about misinformation and how you can prevent it. And I can tell you there are, and there was also a mention about whether there are any national initiatives. So let me take this time to very, very quickly also explain some of the, what I call Prajwala effect, you know, what are some of the outcomes that came out of it. Firstly, this case was not adversarial. It was consensual. The adversarial aspects are still ongoing. The case is still ongoing and we are still trying to evaluate. Particularly, this one suggestion is not accepted, so we, it is still under consideration. But a lot more happened thereafter because a government committee was also appointed. So there is a huge national initiative. I will put the site also in the chat box later. But today, thanks to this one case, first cybercrime dot gov dot in this is a very important tool for protection against cybercrime so please do all of y'all note it down so this site came to being after Prajwala and in pursuance of that initially it addressed issues pertaining to women and children so you could file complaints of offenses cybercrime offenses against women and children online but now it is open for any kind of cybercrime complaint to be submitted online. The only difference is if it is an offense pertaining to women and children, you can even submit it in an anonymous form. So apart from that, in all other forms, here you have a huge and important tool where you can sit at home and still file your complaint. Thereafter, you have to participate in the investigation in usual course. But what it did was it took away this necessity of having to run from pillar to post to figure out where is the jurisdiction police station. Do you go to a local police station or to the cyber crime cell? Well, how are you supposed to file the complaint, etc.? All of that is taken care of. This is an initiative of the Ministry of Home Affairs. Therefore, this is one of the first national initiatives that came up. And the other most impactful initiative, thanks to Prajwala, was an MOU was signed with this US-based entity called NECMEC, NCMEC, which deals with or aggregates child sexual abuse content and then releases hash values to tra track out pedophiles. Thanks to this connect, now in India, we have started a huge initiative against pedophiles. So only for Maharashtra, I can tell you as of March, I think nearly 400 FIRs were registered and we called it Operation uh, Blackface. So you have this whole uh, initiative to not only catch pedophiles, but to prosecute them. I always say, and I started off with this in the beginning also, right? Deterrence. Deterrence can happen only if you have effective enforcement. And this operation is something which showed that pedophiles can be brought to book. And that is important and more awareness about this kind of uh, strong enforcement that is happening across India is important. Finally, there are a lot of issues women face, women and children. We are, Amitabh spoke about cyberbullying, one of the most horrific and most rampant of uh, crimes. So when you come to any form of content, I'm not talking only about certain kinds of heavy content, but when it comes to any kind of content, once it's identified as false, once it's identified as uh, negative or criminal, then you can have it removed in terms of blocking further content uploads from different URLs, 
and also have a tracer technology which goes backwards to check whether similar content has been uploaded from other sites and to take it down. Right now under Prajwala, this is being done only for violent uh, imagery of women like rape and gang rape videos and also child sexual abuse content. But the technology is such it can be applied to everything. In terms of fake news, a lot has happened, you know, post Prajwala, use of AI, use of these kind of or alternatives that were brought up has had a huge impact in terms of combating fake news. So for instance, you have uh, trusted flaggers who identify fake news. And based on that, if you look at some of these statistics, millions of um, uh, tweets or millions of Facebook uh, uh, posts are being uh, filtered thanks to this. So in tweeting, you don't have a filtration, but where it is already identified as fake news, there'll be a warning that comes up. In Facebook, you have a filtration process where once it is identified as fake news, then it is blocked. So you have technology that is also being used as an effective tool to fight crime. And it can be done. So you have so many remedies. You just have to know how to find them. Manju mentioned in one of her uh, points, a uh, Thing, the last point she mentioned about how to fight misinformation and said, speak to a friend. In fact, that was the concept behind Cyber Sati. That whenever somebody is in trouble, whenever someone needs help, the first person they reach to is a friend. They don't reach to family. They don't reach out definitely to authority figures or lawyers immediately. They will reach out to a friend. So for that friend to guide you properly, for that friend to not give you misinformation, and probably land you in more trouble, right? So the concept of cyber sati was you have to be a better cyber friend. So when a friend, you know, you have to be a better cyber friend for yourself to protect yourself, to know your rights and how to get your remedies. But when someone else approaches you also, you have to know it better. How do you get your rights and how do you, how do you know what is fake? what is right and what is wrong. And that's why Cyber Sati was set up. So do also visit cybersati.org. I'm sure there will be many, many questions after this session in all of your minds. And hopefully you will find some uh, answers and solutions also probably on the site. That's really informative, ma'am. Uh, participants can note that uh, website cybercrime.gov.in and it's really happy to see that uh, the activities of Cyber Sati and uh, a little bit uh, more on your activities, how you empower the society through knowledge and encourage responsible technology to ensure safe digital usage. Very shortly. Yes, thank you so much for that, uh, Nisha. Yes, so the whole idea is that we, uh, I've been uh, speaking about cyber safety and uh, also conducting capacity building uh, 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 training and training programs for judiciary and uh, police, etc. But I realized that the primary stakeholders for the internet or the digital domain are its users. So it's very important for users to know what are the threats and vulnerabilities, what are their rights and what are their remedies. And to that effect, what Cyber Sati has been doing, and especially during this COVID time where there has been a huge spurt of uh, cyber crimes, particularly financial crimes like the OTP frauds that were mentioned, etc. What we have initiated is we have programs that run for children in terms of creating awareness and understanding and how to combat these kind of issues, gender-based uh, uh, awareness programs. Then uh, we, are, uh, we are also a think tank which involves in policy making, so bottoms up and top down. So we uh, ensure that uh, information about cyber awareness percolates down to the grassroots level. So one of my earliest sessions was not just for students, but for villagers in this uh, place called Tonk in Rajasthan. And uh, uh, special thanks to Bharatiya Vidyapeet, uh, I'm sorry, Banastali Vidyapeet for uh, organizing that program. But thanks to that, we were able to carry the message of cyber safety 
right down to grassroots level users. And I think one of the speakers talked about that. You are enabling farmers with, uh, you know, uh, data and devices, but you're not ensuring digital literacy. So ultimately, Cyber Sati is all about digital literacy and through that knowledge to empower them to be peer mentors. So the, the construct of Cyber Sati is to be peer mentors who will be aware themselves and protect themselves and also protect others. And the last message that Cyber Sati carries also is what I told you of deterrence. It just doesn't tell women or children the do's and don'ts. It doesn't just talk about best practices, but it also uh, carries forward the message to possible culprits. So many times we have heard uh, youngsters, you know, children are goaded on by other children, their peers, by saying, oh, you can't hack this system. You know, you don't know enough to do that. You don't have the guts to do certain things. You know, dares. So let me just see whether you have the you know, the guts to go and uh, maybe propose to a girl, etc. Right? So we have seen this. We know the impact of it, even when it happens physically, but when it happens digitally, the harm can be much more wide. Something that may be done thinking, you know, by a child, thinking it's just a dare, it's a prank, or it's just something which is funny, as you rightly pointed out earlier. So all these things can actually convert themselves into criminal acts online. India is a very young nation. We don't want a nation full of criminals merely because they did not know that they were committing a crime. So that's the primary message that Cyber Sati takes forward in terms of how people, that is youngsters, should not inadvertently also commit crime. They should know what they should not do so that they can prevent themselves and others from committing that. Yes, as you said, youth is our strength. And Sadish, uh, we have uh, discussed about this misinformation, cyberbullying, but how lack of awareness in cybersecurity make them prone to malware and ransom attacks and so on? Uh, how can a person be safe online or to protect one from cyber attack? Uh, sorry, yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, that was a very brief explanation by the, uh, uh, you know, by Madam, uh, right? So people, uh, uh, whoever uh, is using any form of technology, right? Mobile phone or laptops, first they should know what they are using, what is what. Uh, if they're using mobile phone, what is the limitations and what, what can be done, what should not be done, right? So people, uh, uh, users, the you know, normal users, the, the problem in India that happens because, you know, uh, uh, the technology is handed over to the uh, users before even creating the awareness. Right? So everybody has mobile phone, but nobody knows what is the, uh, 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 you know, uh, limitations of that particular mobile phone. So, uh, and there are a lot of cases that has been happening, you know, we spoke about, uh, so we have platform to register a complaint, uh, uh, you know, there are so many cases that has been registered. So these are just 15% of the cases, what we are talking about, right? There are, there are still 85% of the cases that are unregistered cases and, and people are uh, uh, facing that particular uh, issues on a day-to-day -day basis. Right. Uh, uh, personally, uh, in a week, I get around more than 10 to 15 members contacting me individually via different social platform uh, uh, regarding that, uh, you know, they have so and so cyber uh, issues there. You know, someone is trying to blackmail them. Someone has hacked their personal pictures. Someone has, uh, you know, uh, 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 listening to their conversation. Someone is blackmailing. All these things come up individually when I ask them why uh, you did not go to cyber crime you know you should go and file a complaint right the first thing that uh, they they say is no i'm i'm a bit afraid because i don't want to get this disclosed any anywhere outside right so people sh should realize that nobody is going to disclose anything even if you file a complaint in uh, cyber crime your name is not going to come up uh, anywhere right so first thing that people should do is if they face any kind of cyber uh, incident they should go and and uh, uh, you know of register a complaint. So that is why you know that is when even the cyber crime will uh, uh, you know start analyzing the issue and and 
you know try to see if that particular criminal is trying to uh, do similar activity or has done any kind of similar activity right so they'll be able, uh, able to easily identify uh, uh, the uh, uh, you know uh, root uh, cause for uh, the criminal to commit uh, that uh, particular incident right uh, uh, you know in in uh, to, after a covid situation uh, if you see there is a very very drastically uh, uh, you know things has been changed uh, because there was uh, everything has been changed in the past uh, 100 years you know uh, 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 our mobile phones, our, our car, now we have smart cars, now we have smart TVs and everything. The only thing that did not change for the past 100 <laughs> years, more than 100 years, in fact, I would say the education system, right? So before, uh, whenever there is a school, we'll have to go and study. Everybody will go to the school or college and then they'll study. But in the current, this this is a very drastic change in the current, uh, this year that happened, right? All these schools suddenly become virtual school, right? But, uh, uh, you know, uh, look at the imbalance. Uh, it, it needed a lot of backup. It needed a lot of education. It needed a lot of awareness. You know, the teachers are not aware of these smart classes. The teachers are not ready for attending these classes. The students are not ready. Everybody has to buy a mobile phone now. Right? It, it has become a mandate for each and every parents to buy an individual mobile or provide their mobile phone to their kids. Right? Uh, but they don't know what their kids are doing. Right? Uh, uh, maybe uh, educated people uh, uh, will be able to uh, categorize or, or uh, you know, control their uh, child. Uh, uh, what they are doing, they can monitor their activities on a regular. But think of the people uh, from the rural places. They don't know what is mobile phone, first of all, right? They don't know what is Zoom. Everybody is using Zoom. Everybody using uh, different video conferencing platform. Nobody knows what it is, right? And then they tend to install different applications. They tend to click different uh, URLs. When they start coming to digital uh, platform, you know, uh, they, they start uh, uh, creating WhatsApp. You know, now teachers started sharing materials in WhatsApp, right? They, they send the reference link to the students via a WhatsApp and, and that, that gets connected uh, in a different way. They create a group and, and slowly they move to different social platform. Uh, uh, they wanted to try out different uh, Instagram, Facebook and all the different uh, platforms, right? So people are, uh, uh, you know, the students can easily uh, uh, has, now has hands to move around and play around across the internet uh, uh, they can look uh, for anything right uh, there is no control over it and and because parents do not know uh, how to control it first of all right so so i think <clears throat> it is time that we should educate the uh, parents and also you know uh, uh, parallelly educate the uh, uh, children but uh, uh, you know uh, uh, addressing uh, talking to a uh, uh, first standard or second standard or sixth standard uh, uh, school girl about uh, uh, cyber uh, crime or, or you know uh, uh, making them understand wh what the cyber world is they're, they're definitely not going to listen to us uh, either if they listen they're not going to follow everything uh, every do's and don'ts right if you say something don't do it that is when they'll start doing it right so so people should, uh, uh, parents should first learn it before uh, even providing the mobile phone to their uh, children. And whenever you have a mobile phone or you have a laptop, do not click on any unnecessary link. Do not open any unwanted apps. Do not install any unwanted apps. And, and uh, you know, uh, whenever there's a, there's a customer care call or, or any, any, do not share your password to anybody. First of all, do not convert your physical emotions into a digital life, right? I, I've been hearing this news, uh, getting this complaint for a very, very long time from many people across the country. You know, many women, many college girls, many school children contact me saying that, you know, I have sent a picture, my personal picture to someone and uh, they are uh, now blackmailing. You know, a guy, a school girl and a school guy uh, being in a relationship, they start doing personal conversation, personal chats. And after a certain uh, period, they, they suddenly break up and this guy starts blackmailing, right? Or he started uh, sending that pictures to a few other people. So, so that is when this girl emotionally gets affected. And because she's just a school kid or a college girl, she cannot convey this to their parents or she cannot talk this to or talk to, about this to anybody and she commits suicide. So, so we, have, we have faced so many cases like that. So uh, 
uh, whenever you convert your physical emotions into digital be very very careful uh, because you cannot always even though if you are sending to the known person you are not sure uh, you are not 100% sure that the uh, only the person that you are intend to send is opening that message or seeing that message right so we have seen cases where this girl has sent a picture and at the end uh, uh, he and his friends together watched that video on pictures right there are cases that happen even though you know the person do not send anything digital do not they first of all take your personal uh, emotions into convert into digital if you convert it into digital it will they be there forever and ever once your digital physical emotions are converted into digital it will never it can never be erased it will be there in the uh, uh, virtual digital world uh, forever and at any point of time anybody can uh, uh, see that so so make sure whatever you do in your digital presence it cannot maybe people cannot see it but it it will be there it will be available for even after your death your your digital uh, 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 prints will be there forever for people to see so so whenever you do any kind of activity make sure maybe people do not know what you are doing but everybody will know at any point of time if you think that all your pictures are safe in whatsapp if whatsapp gets hacked and and the attacker leaks all the uh, personal data in the internet then your data is in the public right similarly you know, uh, if a mobile particular if you think you have iphone nobody can hack it if there is any one vulnerability that was found that is found by an attacker and he hacks that particular vulnerability then your personal pictures are avail- should, will be available in the public internet so so be very very careful with that how to digitally educate that's very important i think amitabh can add more on that but before that we'll go for a very short break and we'll come back after that okay she power virtual hackathon and summit in association with us department of state alumni ties and world learning title sponsor swad food products divasavan ratri kanni vechi kudichalum mathu nil nerengilum nalladu kaikkalo keedanashini vimuktamaya swad adattu mattayeri nalla bhakshanam thanneyana nalla marunna execution partner kerala startup mission powered by channelim.com supported by gender park Cow Startup Labs and Geeks Up. Even support Green Media. Okay, welcome all. Coming back to the discussion, Amitabh, uh, we are discussing about the digital education. So certain websites which are insecure might request personal info from youth, uh, something which young users often fall victim for. Uh, the lack of uh, proper or strict cyber law information introduces a youth to foul language adult content in an early age so how can we put a control over that we need to educate the students very seriously how we can include this in our curriculum or syllabus that's a big question yeah totally i think uh, curriculum is the, the the big word and uh, many states many schools as well as the cbsc and the ncert are working very hard on uh, creating this curriculum only issue with cyber space is it moves really quickly so what you create if we go through the old system of uh, going through um, you know various channels of getting it approved by the time it is approved it has already become outdated but still uh, there are uh, many positive eff- uh, efforts being made uh, by the ministry at the central level and many state ministries as well uh, we have had the privilege of uh, helping uh, ncert and cbsc in the same space the other aspect is uh, large scale awareness campaigns uh, which have thankfully been taken up uh, by many banks uh, by, by the rbi uh, the only issue because we work a lot with school children and college ch- uh, children is that uh, sometimes we forget to um, focus on the most important part which is the why why are children online is something we need to realize and we need to make them realize otherwise something which has become extremely uh, popular nowadays is doom scrolling that you are sitting on the screen and you are just tapping it away while it refreshes again and again and again 
and you really don't know what you're searching for uh, your brain is entangled in these amazing visuals and sounds but uh, you stay far away from it as far as and this is what we tell them in every uh, workshop of ours your new friend your new website your new app your new game be very clear about the why and if they are asking you for information think why are they asking for my aadhar card why are they asking for my father's mobile number why are they asking for my car number this is these um questions are extremely important to be answered at a young age because on the internet everybody is an adult there is, there are no children because uh, the parental controls are limited most of the information is not fine tuned for children uh me as a 37 year old and my nephew as a 7 year old we view almost the same content we play almost the same games hence parenting and what is called digital parenting in uh, today's terminology becomes extremely extremely important um children need to be informed the second you give them the device that is when you have to spend equal amount of time with them knowing what they are consuming on the device uh, there are great companies coming up which are promoting children becoming coders and that is true but similarly we need to do ads about how children can be safe from pedophiles how children can be safe from cyber fraud as <coughs> 99% of india is not comfortable telling anybody that they were a part of the cyber crime or a cyber fraud in our country uh, actual crimes like uh, uh, rape and domestic violence are still a taboo to talk about cyber crimes are miles away before people will open up and talk about them uh, every time we do our workshop 5 to 10 boys and girls and you can tell from their faces the second you talk about certain crimes that they have been involved in it either they have shared their picture or they have asked their partner to send that picture to later <coughs> use it negatively or blackmail them hence uh, it becomes extremely important for all the stakeholders to take a proactive step towards education okay uh, so manchu uh, as amita mentioned uh, extensive yeah. user base for social media has made a major shape of today's youth prone to misinformation or you, you would call a distorted facts there is uh, too much information yeah. available that they don't know what to trust uh, what not to it's not easy to find a quick solution so along with the technology support along with the human effort how we can uh, prevent this okay uh, so um, i guess uh, nisha like you said we are all exposed to uh, uh, we are all exposed to various kinds of news uh, so uh, and since on a day to day basis we do not have so much time to you know probably actually go through the news i suggest that as a first step as a preventive step please follow authentic media houses you know those professional organizations where they actually invest time energy resources and manpower to get news to get it authenticated have quotes have data have facts and have figures to put uh, this thing so don't so so don't uh, believe websites which are with huge uh, you know which which have often in the past have given a lot of fake news so start with please spend about 10 minutes in your social feed i think all in all the feeds you can have uh, preferential i mean you can get updates from uh the kind of sources that you want so go and check whether the first see uh, i think in facebook you have you can you have an option where see first so when you see the authentic news first there is lesser danger of you falling prey for news that is that should not uh, that is a fake uh, that is giving you misinformation so as a first step follow authentic news sources number 2 uh, check your uh, check uh, the uh, the authenticity of it even if assuming you you follow and not you know you you're following a person who you think is credible don't always take every news at its face value please google it to see what are the different kind of uh, you know uh, different kind of viewpoints that are coming up sometimes especially when there is a region when there is a communal conflict there is news emanating to support a community or uh, debunk another community at such points of time i think you should definitely put the keywords to see what are the various viewpoints what is the police saying what is the community saying so be a responsible news consumer
tuber because tomorrow you don't know what kind of news can affect your own psyche or your own work so as a reader or a consumer you must be just as you consume food and you're careful of what calories are going is it oily is it hygienic please do the same thing with food i like the like the the top cop from kerala had just said, follow safe cyber protocols thank you okay so advocate napna you are the one who look into the legal aspects not only the legal you also know social political impact of both cyber and mis- misinformation so what we need to take care how we can use the digital platforms responsibility especially to the youngsters there is an assumption that if you are uh, uh, if it's a do good a message then you have to share right that's the first step the second step is as uh, was pointed out earlier you want to be first of the block so before others share you want to be the first person who shares the third is there is an assumption that these things i mean the the do gooder is can be the worst thing so some of the lynchings that have happened in india are tracked to so called do gooder messages which have been circulated on whatsapp because two people in one very sad case merely because this musician had dreadlocks and they had just he was just traveling with a friend to a waterfall you know and they thought they were just going out to get a bit of nature they never made it back home so here was a situation where a uh, rumor is uh, started as if uh, the person is a child uh, abductor child kidnapper and then as they travel the news travels so they leave from the place where they had gone to see the waterfall but on the way they are caught and um, uh, lynched so these kind of uh, impact or from this information is something very important to know even a small thing like you are continuously sharing uh, messages for instance for blood donation you don't check to see whether it's somebody who you know personally someone for uh, shares and then it becomes viral it's just continuously on the move it may actually be a genuine case where it has happened and over and done with many months back but you are actually exposing that person's personal details through the share how much do we really understand this construct of privacy in situations like this are we really doing good for somebody or are we risking their personal uh, safety by exposing personal information so through that one message where you may think you're doing good by encouraging blood donation you are uh, you are disclosing the name of a person their mobile number and the information that someone was unwell in their family and you all know how it can be misused so whenever uh, we speak about misinformation and uh, protection or preventive measures exercise of caution and discretion would be the best bet when it comes to law the one myth i would want to dispel and i'm sure a lot of youngsters will be very happy with this information in my opinion a whatsapp administrator cannot be held liable as an intermediary or as a person who is responsible because if you look at the definition of intermediary under the law it is whatsapp itself which is the intermediary not a person who's using the word whatsapp administrator whatsapp admin is a name that the entity has given to the person who can form groups but if you go into the uh, uh, the uh, kind of actions that a whatsapp administrator can do that person cannot do all that is mandated under law for an intermediary it also does not capture all the parameters which are necessary for an entity to be called an intermediary the the flip side of this is they don't get the safe harbor of protection under section 79 that law gives them but at the same time they also can't be held liable vicariously for the actions of others you know if somebody else comes and posts on a group the group admin cannot be made liable and this is my opinion and it is supported to some extent by one judgment from the delhi high court in a civil case we have to wait for more criminal cases to come up on this but otherwise this is the uh, basis so we have to be careful 
we are not going to deter ourselves because we are scared that there may be a case against us tomorrow. We should stop ourselves, push the pause button because of the harm that our action causes. And here again, a cautionary note before I close out on this. Merely because you're not liable as an admin does not mean you're not liable at all. For instance, we have come across many instances where groups are created just to share uh, uh, pedophile content. So you already know when you're forming the group what you're doing or the intent or purpose behind it. The very intent or purpose makes you liable for your action. So you may not be liable vicariously, but you will still be liable for your own action. Similar is a situation like a boys locker room. Today we know that it's not just one boys locker room. There are many like this. There was one news report in Times of India, I think about uh, singles, where again a college group was sharing personal information and uh, you know um, uh, very uh, sexually suggestive content on a WhatsApp group. So when you create groups like this, where the intent or purpose itself could be tagged as criminal, you can be held liable personally. So do, remember, law is always about it depends. There are no yes or no answers. So always exercise caution. Be careful. And if you are a victim, take your chance, file your complaint. It can be very frustrating. It can be a long, long haul. But unless and until you try, you would never know whether you're going to succeed. And even if you get 50% success, it's still better than most of the odds you get in life. And most importantly, unless and until you continue to file your complaints, there will not be sufficient statistics to show what is the real risk and harm from trending cyber crimes, as we call it, right? And finally, remember, when you don't complain, you're emboldening the criminal. So they will then come back and do more crimes against you. And you're also opening the floodgates for these criminals to go out there and commit the same crime against others. So for your own sake, your protection and that of others, please definitely do file your complaints. That legal side is well explained, ma'am. Uh, Sadish, when coming to this government aspect, how seriously government should take initiatives to put a control on this? Sometimes it takes a lot of time to sort out the digital crimes. Do we have a technologically well sound system to tackle it? Okay, yeah. So, uh, you know, when speaking about uh, how fast or how well uh, the law and the legal enforcement agencies can address the cyber crimes, right? So, if you take the today uh, current uh, digital world, uh, the time and the technology uh, that uh, the law enforcement has is very, very limited, right? Uh, uh, you know, uh, if a crime is committed against a woman, uh, say, for example, uh, uh, you know, uh, a personal picture has been uh, uh, leaked and, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the woman is under very, very pressure. So... It has to be remediated in in within uh, you know uh, no time right the image should be taken out uh, across the social media uh, and and uh, you know then the uh, uh, the particular uh, affected person would feel uh, relaxed but however in in current uh, landscape you will see if you file a complaint you know we'll have to talk to Facebook we'll have to talk to either Instagram wherever the photo picture is. And, and we need to uh, report it and they'll have to review it and they'll have to come back uh, to us. So the, the time taken is very, very uh, higher for any sensitive uh, matter. You know, sometimes we do get uh, immediate response, but uh, sometimes we don't. We'll have to wait until the, uh, the uh, service provider responds to us, right? If you wanted to track a person uh, who committed a crime, uh, right, the law enforcement agency uh, uh, should depend on these uh, Arkansas ISP provider, either Airtel, Vodafone, anybody. Right, if I wanted to track a particular person uh, for the location, then I'll have to raise a request to the ISP. Then ISP has to, uh, you know, look at it, and they should get the details, and then they'll they'll send it to us. Right, the the time that is taken here is like pretty huge compared to the. Uh, uh, 
a sensitivity of the uh, uh, incident. So uh, I think it is time for uh, uh, legal and law enforcement agencies to, to uh, uh, come up with a process or a plan to mitigate, uh, address these kind of cyber uh, issues. Because even uh, the, the law that we have is pretty old. Uh, it is not updated to the current uh, 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 cyber uh, uh, world, right? So, so I think it is. Uh, this is the time where uh, uh, the legal law, uh, the government should take initiative to review the existing laws, to review the existing uh, uh, process to address uh, 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 cyber pain. Because you know, I've seen many places where uh, the uh, uh, law enforcement agencies or the legal uh, treat uh, cyber crime, uh, you know, similar in similar way of uh, the uh, regular crimes, right? But uh, uh, for example, if an ATM machine is, you know, breached uh, with a, a hammer, it is a crime. Uh, if it is uh, same way, if it is done via a laptop, it is a cyber crime, right? There is only a minute line between cyber and uh, 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 the regular crime, but that has a huge difference. That has a huge impact, right? Because when you hit with a hammer, uh, we know who hit, but when you do with a laptop, nobody knows who did it. Right. So, so the technology, uh, uh, the law enforcement agency should get adopted to the uh, uh, advanced uh, technologies. Should should look at different uh, software. Should look at different uh, forensics tools, for example. Uh, uh, you know, uh, and and come up with a process to to address uh, uh, all the uh, cyber crimes. Because uh, uh, this this is my uh, uh, you know feedback that I've heard from many many women and many people. Right. Uh, uh, they don't, they, uh, as soon as when I ask them, why did you not go to cyber crime? They immediately say, this is very practical. Uh, you can, you can hear this, uh, from many people. They immediately say that, you know, cyber crime department is not taking our, our complaint. Right? That is a common statement that I keep hearing from many people, but, uh, uh, you know, we cannot blame cyber crime also, even they are, they have very limited resources. They have very limited technical uh, they have a lot of technical limitations, as I said, right? If a picture is uploaded into uh, uh, Facebook, then the law enforcement agency should wait until Facebook responds. You know, as per our culture, uh, you know, uh, 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 off-nude picture is not okay. But when it uh, when you go to US or other uh, countries, uh, it is okay. It is not uh, when we reported a similar uh, picture. You know, this family is very orthodox family. They want to, they don't want, the, uh, uh, you know, off nude picture. Uh, but when we reported it, what Facebook said, uh, you know, this is not uh, inappropriate content. This was their comment. But, but according to us, according to the family culture, it is an inappropriate picture. But according to Facebook, it is not because uh, they, they, they are really different. When you talk to Facebook, they, they, they are uh, based out of Ireland. They, they obey only to Ireland law. They do not obey to Indian law. They do not, uh, uh, you know, uh, immediately respond to Indian uh, agencies, right? I think it is time where uh, uh, we should also put uh, and control to all these third party uh, agencies such as uh, Facebook, Google, any, any agencies, right? Where we should have a control where if something goes wrong, we should, uh, there should be someone who is accountable for immediate action items. Yes, I think we'll continue this uh, panel discussion after this uh, Q&A session. Uh, now it's time to open for the questions. We had almost 94 participants in the beginning and it's almost 72 now because it's almost one o'clock lunchtime. So let's uh, open for the questions now. Participants, actively you can ask questions. Any any questions, uh, people? Uh, you yeah. can. Uh, I think sorry. you uh, can unmute. Can I go yeah. ahead? Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, first of all, a very good uh, initiative, Nisha. Thanks uh, to the team and to your wonderful job. Satish, highly impressed by the uh, information you have, and it's well, well. Uh, what do you say? It goes with the situation right now. What we have. And uh, just, I would like uh, the seniors over here, the lawyers or uh, lawyers in terms of the cyber crime as such, why every state has a different approach towards one single problem, what we have for women. Uh, of course, Hyderabad, I have seen what, uh, uh, what Sunita Stream Prajwala has gone through 
tremendous, very good, uh, you know, initiative they have taken and they have proved, no doubt in that. But still, if all the state get together and have only one common, you know, initiative instead of only Sathi or Mardakshak in Hyderabad or in Bombay, Saheli, just have one and with a very, very speedy um, in terms of uh, remedy for school kids as such, because I've seen a lot of uh, problems and being uh, for kids as such. And really, Satish, it takes literally 14 or 15 days just to get it registered if you visit PS, but on online it is fast. But so we need speedy remedy. That's the only thing I want to know. Like, if can, is it possible? By yeah. The yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's again the public voice. I hear it again, right? So uh, you, you well defined that it, it, it takes some time. It takes 15 days, right? As I said, uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, limitations and dependencies even for the law enforcement agencies uh, because even they, they try a lot uh, to, to solve each and every issues. But as I said, uh, the, the, even the law enforcement agencies, they, they, they have very limitations to, uh, you know, communicate with the uh, third party uh, sites because if they file an FAR, right, the, the FAR has to be closed, right, which is again a big task for them. Uh, because they'll have to follow up with the third party uh, sites. If you file a complaint uh, saying that your picture has been uploaded in Instagram or Facebook or uh, has been shared in WhatsApp, right? Uh, uh, immediately the law enforcement or the legal uh, will reach out to the concerned uh, authorities. But the response uh, from them, uh, uh, we are not sure whether, first of all, we are not sure whether they'll respond. And, and uh, uh, second, uh, we don't know when they will respond, right? These are the two things that we need to look at. Every law enforcement agency is facing that kind of struggle. You know, at times they respond, but uh, you know, many times they do not uh, respond. So that is why our team is struggling here. And, and it is not that they don't want to do, it is, it is a limitation from the third party uh, 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 applications on the sites, right? So which I think definitely, uh, you know, uh, our, our, even our prime minister has said that, you know, a uh, new cyber law will be uh, uh, formed. They are going to form a new committee for all the cyber uh, related stuff. But parallelly, I think we need to uh, include uh, cyber security in the education system as well for even for it should start from the uh, school kids. I think that is something which we should do at, from our side. Uh, as a end a normal user, I think it is time for us to educate our children uh, about the uh, digital world while uh, the uh, legal law and the government agencies you know look forward and and fight against the the cyber crimes. I think down the line we can definitely expect that all these issues will be addressed uh, uh, as fast as uh, it has to be based on the issue sensitivity. Okay. Thanks, Satish. Thank you, Nisha. Yes, uh, we will go to the next question, but can you just make the questions a little bit precise and short because we have only limited time. So we will move on to the uh, next question. Anybody? While we are waiting for the next question, can I just add on to some of the things? Yeah, sure, sure, sure ma'am, yeah. please. See, because there were a lot of things, very important points that Satisha has highlighted, but on the legal front, I just wanted to clarify on this aspect. Firstly, um, uh, there are remedies. You know, the first point is, again, another outcome of Prajwala was, earlier when you uh, complained about uh, content online, which could be, uh, uh, which could affect you uh, materially, you did not have a specific button. It went under a generic button. So they don't have the wherewithal to keep checking the millions of uh, complaints that come in very speedily. So the change that was done through this case was a specific button was introduced for things like uh, sexually explicit or suggestive content that impacts women, like gang and, gang and rape, uh, rape and gang rape uh, videos, etc., and child sexual abuse. So the minute it became a specific button, intermediaries also will act faster or that is the assumption, right? So the law may not put a, uh, an onus on them to act on user complaint. But that doesn't mean you don't or you can't complain. You can still complain and they will still act on it, depending on the kind of complaint that you're submitting. So please go ahead and file your complaints. The second aspect is, Satish mentioned about the new laws that are coming in. Firstly, there is enough remedy under existing laws. 
the problem has not been want of remedies even the remedies that we have we have not really utilized well so use it well even what the remedies are today secondly in terms of the uh, new cyber security laws that are expected and more urgently new intermediary guidelines are expected it was supposed to come out more than a month back if not uh, in june itself but they are still waiting for it and possibly this aspect which we had formulated in 2018 will get better philip through this intermediary guidelines now earlier what was happening and this is a little technical but it made a big difference in terms of outcomes what was happening earlier was when police also wanted help from intermediaries they were sending notices under what is section 91 of the criminal procedure code which is to call for content etc and then this 15 day delay and whether they will respond at all was not there but as of 2018 under the ages of mha we had done a nationwide uh, awareness program on safe harbor and how, what are the limitations of it to be more precise under section 79 it act and our, through that initiative we formulated a new methodology and we explained it to everybody including police across india maybe it is still not being followed by everyone but you can always ask for it if you are a victim seeking remedies ask for the notice to be issued under section 79c and not under 91 that itself will make a big difference in terms of ensuring that it is acted on within 36 hours so the 36 hour limit happens because of the intermediary rules so you need to track back your rights also to the intermediary rules and once the new rules are published hopefully there will be a lot more clarity for intermediaries such as social media platforms to act faster in terms of these kind of crimes okay thank you ma'am uh, i'm getting uh, messages to my whatsapp also if uh, somebody is under cyber attack or cyber bullying what is the first thing they need to do uh, specifically girls is i mean uh, please go ahead yeah sorry uh. so uh, uh, you know if it is a, a crime against uh, any any women if they think that uh, they are being targeted first they should do is uh, you know they should talk to someone they should you know uh, 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 let that there is something that is happening that there is something that is affecting them right and 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 the next thing i i would suggest them to to definitely uh, talk to the uh, law enforcement local law enforcement agencies and and uh, you know unless until you you register the complaint there is nothing that can be done uh, so you need to first of all uh, you know immediately talk to the agencies because they will definitely help you out do not uh, uh, do any any other uh, activities do not think that uh, uh, you know it cannot be solved at all right every issues can be solved so if you face any issues if you think that you are being targeted if you think that you are being Uh, uh, you are being the victim. Just talk to the uh, agencies or uh, talk to the experts. Uh, the uh, uh, you know there are a lot of private uh, cyber security consultants and and uh, you know legal uh, advisories, right? So you you can talk to them. Uh, let them know your uh, situation. See, uh, uh, we have the saying, right? Uh, uh, you should always be truthful to your uh, uh, doctor and advocates because they are they are the one who is going to save you. Similarly, you need to be truthful to your Uh, uh in current world you need to be truthful to your cyber security consultants because they are the one who is going to save you from the uh, digital world so so uh, even uh, the cyber security consultants are also kind of uh, uh, you know doctors for you where uh, they are going to look at your uh, issues and they are going to solve it for you right so so you need to first of all bring uh, this outside and and let uh, them know that uh, you are facing the incident Okay, so Amita, uh, you can add more on that. Uh, you need to leave now. I know that, uh, but a few quick tips to, to brace yourself against cyber threats or uh, bully or misinformation. Yes, yeah, certainly. I think uh, one of the spaces, uh, like uh, Sir mentioned, uh, we have our online safety hub where you can anonymously reach out and ask for advice. Um, filing the FIR is the only way to get remedy from the state. No, no doubts about it. on the other side we know how difficult it is to file an fir uh, how much of harassment that comes with the fir and uh, 
not being extremely critical towards the police but do having a critical uh, uh, voice in small towns of india especially north india where we work extensively cyber crime is still not considered a crime financial crime might be registered but uh, uh, even in some of the districts of delhi and mumbai registering a cyber crime by itself is a mammoth task so we know those realities and uh, we do inform uh, the, the survivor about these realities on the second side uh, there are cyber crime cells which you can reach out to directly uh, there is online filing of the fir uh, like ma'am informed us uh, there is the cyber uh, crime gov uh, website plus if it is happening on one of the major social media platforms uh, uh, because we work very closely with them uh, sending them a direct message and helping uh, the user uh, remove their information from these platforms Uh, is uh, quite easily done on the other side india has about 2000 active social media platforms another 5 600 active apps clients and we usually talk about the five, top 5 10 but the rest of them don't even have safety advisory boards safety mechanisms or anywhere where you can complain so um, like we were talking earlier i think uh, uh, while our uh, law is uh, quite strong we need to work more closely with all the tech service providers in the country to make sure there is a single point where legal agencies can reach out this mechanism has to be super smooth and uh, while they make so much profit in india they need to invest equally in safety of indians so uh, for anybody uh, suffering from cyber crime uh, you know the the website link is here similarly we also have partners across the country Uh, who are working on providing solutions on providing counseling which is actually the major aspect of it and also uh, the legal steps and uh, connections to lawyers who actually take up these cases pro bono so there are lots of good people in the system as well um, uh, but uh, precaution is much better than cure so that would be my advice to everybody uh, to be safe and to maintain the cyber hygiene which the officer earlier spoke about as well Thank you, Amitabh, for providing that uh, information. So let's move on to the next question. Uh, actually, uh, hello. Yeah, please. Yeah, uh, my question is open to the panel because recently the Section 118A of the Kerala Police Act uh, it receives severe backlash from the social media community. Yeah, despite it being, you know, uh, despite it being against making defam defamatory post or uh, the social media. <clears throat> post uh, like uh, instigating defamatory content a uh, criminal offense so do you think the the current uh, the awareness programs that we have are up to effect or what what can what, what can we do more in, in this subject in fact uh, i have written extensively on this you can just go on to my last article on uh, she the people dot tv i have written on this particular aspect very briefly there was a new provision introduced under section 66a of the information technology act which was extensively abused in the name of cyber defamation so your question presupposes that there is no criminalization of defamation which it you already have a defamation provision a criminal provision under indian penal code so if somebody defames you whether it's physically or in paper print or online you can invoke those provisions no, no, no. 499 and 500 ipc nothing stops you from taking action under that so what exactly was the problem with 66a and now 118a kerala police act this is the problem when you file a complaint under 499 and 500 it is what is called as a non cognizable offense you may have heard the colloquialism nc police complaint right nc stands for non cognizable which means a police cannot take cognizance of that case you are expected to file the complaint before a magistrate and the magistrate will issue a summons which also means more importantly that police cannot arrest based on 499 and 500 now 66a was for 
dissemination of um, malicious and uh, scary or alarming uh, you know uh, messages which can cause alarm offensive messages etc amongst other things firstly the section itself was open ended and was inviting trouble and it was just waiting to be struck down now when this whole issue about cyber defamation becoming as if it is something different from defamation and with a lot of political abuse particularly and in the light of two young girls being arrested in uh, mumbai in maharashtra rather one for putting a facebook post and the other for liking it that's it right just for this they were arrested in the light of that a public interest litigation was filed and before the supreme court of india and the supreme court struck down section 66a in 2015 itself in shreya single versus union of india as of 2018 also this section still continued to be used by police therefore pucl filed a public interest litigation and again the supreme court issued directions telling that uh, giving instructions to the government to ensure that every district court and every police station in india will know that this section has been struck down now when section 118a is being introduced by the kerala, kerala uh, in the kerala police act the same uh, uh, the, you know possibility of abuse came to the fore we could also easily argue that 66a was meant to combat cyber bullying and in fact many cases were filed because of its abuse and because of the strike down even cases filed for cyber bullying and cyber stalking got struck down you could easily say this is for that but there is a heavy possibility of misuse or abuse so what i have written about is you can't keep combining sections you need to have separate you need to separate cyber bullying from defamation your very question combine both of these they are not the same offenses they are two separate offenses so if it is defamation go under your indian penal code prove your prima facie case through a magisterial process and get your summons issued if it is if you think it's a shortcut to have arrest then that is purely abuse of law and therefore there was a backlash against 118a also and therefore it was pulled back this actually leads back to nisha's question a while back about free speech and liberties here is a situation where abuse can lead to scuttling of free speech and liberties and that's why the court has come down very heavily even on the parent uh, provision which is 66a if legislators really want to bring in provisions which will protect against cyber bullying let them bring in precise and closed provisions it can't be open ended provisions and if it is defamation if you want to convert defamation from a not cognizable offense to a cognizable or one where a police arrest can be done it has to be evaluated in the context of the free speech and reasonable restriction clause in article 19 including 192 right so we can't just jump in and say suddenly we will change the equation to make defamation amenable to police arrest that is the main reason why there was a backlash and that is the main reason why it got struck down so what we really need now are laws which will be specific and precise to cyber bullying and not for defamation or redefining defamation thank you so much so my good last afternoon. question i mean excuse me uh, good afternoon yeah yeah, yeah please yeah <clears throat> see we are all talking of cyber law in a depth and in a very uh i should say in, in a very in a deep manner so of his over if you see just overall the scenario right now the current scenario of our country with regard to the cyber law many components and features which are lacking because everything has emerged from the basic platform of the conventional law system so my question to the open the session is this open to all is that how can we integrate and couple the cyber law which has got loopholes and portals with the conventional law system which can act as a catalyst to the policy makers of the country that is let it be provincial governments or the central government or any law makers I, i think advocate can answer to that okay so i was just waiting to see if you would like to post it to somebody else i'll give a very brief answer and leave it to the other panelists also to come up 
there okay. is the fallacy in everybody's mind that you know when we talk about cyber crimes it's only those offenses which are there under the information technology law that is not so when we talk about cyber crimes you will be applying legacy systems legacy laws along with these special laws so where the special law provides specifically you will apply those provisions where it does not specifically provide for it it is open for you to look under general law so indian penal code can also be roped in to address cyber crime issues so do not assume that we are actually looking at these two as parallel lines and therefore we have to evaluate whether they will converge or not even today they are already converged even today you have to read both general laws with special laws if you want the correct remedies but in this convergence what is the issue is not the law it is that we are using legacy systems to combat new age uh, and technology enabled crimes so when we use legacy systems we that also needs upskilling and upgrading and that is the exercise that has been going on over the last 20 years there are definitely pitfalls nobody can shy away from that and no one can uh, you know argue that we have not had a fair share of problems in terms of implementation or enforcement of even the existing provisions so that was why i was emphasizing that we need to upskill and upgrade our legacy systems if that is what is going to be applied continuously or continue to apply for cyber uh, crime whether it is the old laws or the new laws if we don't upgrade that then it is not going to help us right so we really need effective enforcement today and that's what all of us should work jointly in terms of an incoherence and uh, you know in a cogent fashion to ensure it okay manju do you want to add anything to that very quickly you don't have much time yeah. Uh, and so actually, I still have a. Manju, there is some was, problem. I mean, yeah, you are not audible, Manju. Please. Uh, so it, is it, is it I think there is some network issues. No, yes, not. I'm I'm able to see, but I am not able to think. Yeah, it's it's, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. No. So. Uh, before winding up uh, the session i would like to uh, point out one more question to uh, sadish sadish uh, let's how we can make use of this challenge because every challenge is an opportunity you know uh, in the indian business market uh, there is a boom for cyber security services and even product companies uh, during the lockdown we have seen cyber attack on big companies also so how startups can leverage the vulnerable situation in the cyber space because we are going to conduct a hackathon on uh, december 20th uh, the one of the problem statement is cyber security so how can you uh, make a comment on that yeah i think uh, you know as i said cyber security uh, uh, 10 years back it was totally illegal now uh, cyber security is one of the leading profession and uh, leading uh, growing industry uh, in the world across the world right so so the lot of startups that is coming in uh, uh, in india uh, where uh, they are they are trying to solve the uh, uh cyber security issues across the globe right so i think uh, uh, you know investing or or spending uh, uh, or creating a firm uh, in cyber security is going to be a huge uh, uh, business market because uh, uh, this is not specific to uh, uh, you know certain domains uh, cyber security will cut across all the uh, uh, industry uh, uh, because cyber security is there in the uh, uh, health industry cyber security is there in the mechanical industry so this is the only industry that that will cut across all the uh, platforms because uh, uh, it it should interact with the doctors it should interact with the mechanical people it should interact with the civil engineers right so so this is the industry which will uh, have to focus for all the uh, domains across the uh, globe right so so this is one of the top growing uh, leading industry but again you know uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, ai uh, algorithms that is being built ai related uh, security software that is being built to solve the uh, cyber uh, security issues right so now ai is also uh, you know combined with cyber security products uh, uh, for the markets to uh, uh, you know play so i think this is something very uh, niche uh, domain and niche uh, skill that uh, uh, people can focus and and uh, uh, 
because there are a lot of startups that is being funded uh, uh, recently uh, in cyber security domain since uh, this is one of the uh, uh, growing market uh, in the uh, globe thank you so much uh, sadish uh, thank you everybody for making this session really uh, really productive uh, nisha i have a quick question uh, for uh, see i have seen so many people they given uh, what are the opportunities we have and what are the suggestions and advices and everything i see the one basic thing is why can the central government increase the power she power in police department so we can uh, increase their crime and also i know i mean uh, you know more benefits for them me you know, by increasing this also in telangana we have 33% of sheep power but why can't the other states are not even following that so yes we'll put forward this suggestion to this police department also i think adgp is not right here now for the uh, panel discussion he has left uh, so that's really a good suggestion we'll definitely note it down thank you so much for that thank you okay so it's time to wind up now uh, all the speakers thank you for making this session really really productive thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule thanks uh, shri manoj ibrahim uh, adgp advocate napnai manju kalanathi sadish ashwin and amitabh kumar for uh, making this session fruitful and uh, thanks us state department alumni ties we're learning us consulate chennai for this wonderful opportunity thanks to all the participants that's really really great participation and you all shared good comments also that's really really awesome so tomorrow we'll meet here with a new subject uh, reskilling of women after covid so please do join us at a sharp 11 o'clock with a new panel and with a new subject thank you so much thank you so much for having us here ranisha it was an amazingly well organized session and special thanks to the us uh, reach outreach program uh, also they are in fact supporting a lot of our uh, initiatives uh, for uh, school children for creating cyber security awareness among school children parents and teachers and as an ivlp alumni and a stanford cddrl alumni it gives me great pleasure to be part of this session today yes thank you for this. thank you thank you so much Thank you thank you Nisha thank you. She Power Virtual Hackathon and Summit in association with US Department of State Alumni Ties and World Learning Title Sponsor Swad Food Products Divosan ratri kanyu achu pidichalum ini nerengilum കീടനാശിനി വിമുക്തമായ സ്വാദ് അടാട്ടുമട്ടയരി നല്ല ഭക്ഷണം തന്നെയാണ് നല്ല മരുന്ന് എക്സിക്യൂഷൻ പാർട്ട്ണർ കേരള സ്റ്റാർട്ടപ്പ് മിഷൻ പവർ ബൈ ചാൻ ലൈൻ ഡോട്ട് കോം സപ്പോർട്ടഡ് ബൈ ജെൻഡർ പാർക്ക് കാവ് സ്റ്റാർട്ടപ്പ് ലാബ്സ് ആൻഡ് ഗീക്സ് അപ്പ് ഇവൻ സപ്പോർട്ട് ഗ്രീൻ മീഡിയ Power Virtual Hackathon and Summit in association with US Department of State Alumni Ties and World Learning Title Sponsor Swad Food Products Divosan ratri kanyu achu pidichalum mari ini nerengilum nalladu kaikkalum keedanaashini vimuktamaya swad adaattu mattayeri nalla bhakshanam thanneyana nalla marunna